Okay, so let's get the box on its side first so you can have a good look at it. So it's a proper Tashi case, uh, numbers on and everything, a little bit of fake leather on the handle. Panning round, you can see the sides and the back. It is quite heavy, this. I tried to keep it in as good condition as I can, but it's not easy with something this this large to house in the collection. It's not in bad nick. So let's get this down and we will go inside. So remember to turn the, the faces in before you open or you will launch a grenade inside. And this is the glory that we've got inside here. So we've got a certificate in there. And then we've got all these additions here. Unfortunately, the glue is coming apart on the slip covers. I know a lot of people have got the ultimate edition and they don't have slips. These originally did, but as you can see, they are falling apart. I will do a remedial on them, but um, let's get into the collection first. So really nice slip covers. I am going to repair them. You can see all the glue coming away from the sides there. Um, just trying to think yeah i'm gonna start in the top left hand corner because i've just picked one at random and this is in the wrong order so we'll start with dr no so obviously sean connery was james bond and as you can see this lovely silver foil reflective slip cover with an embossed 007 and dr no logo at the top and at the bottom ultimate edition james bond and the crest and the two discs dvd are all embossed as well. This was released by Sony for MGM. Uh, it wasn't a Warner because I've got some titles here which were released by Warner for James Bond and I've also got the Fox ones but when Casino Royale came out uh, Sony had the distribution rights so <clears throat> this is why this set is done by Sony. Uh, there's a lot of discs in here as well, which were uncut in the UK for the first time. Golden Eye and Tomorrow Never Dies. Um, they were severely cut on DVD before this uh, box set. Even the special edition, um, Tomorrow Never Dies, was heavily cut. But that's basically everything you get on this set. And this Ultimate Edition had DTS audio. Uh, I think it was half bit rate, but uh, it was still uh, well received, to be honest. So we'll zoom out and we'll have a look at the inside the cases. Again, I don't want the video to go on too long. So outside of the slip cover, you've got a dual disc release, which I've seen a lot of these around uh, without naked, without the slip. Um, but as I said, with the slips being prone to fall apart, um, I'm not surprised. So we've got an Amari tag system on this, which long gone, unfortunately. Uh, we had a Sony Pictures hologram. And inside we have disc art for the films. And we have a booklet. So just like the special edition, because they had lovely booklets inside and nice artwork. I did really like the uh, MGM DVD logo that used to be at the top. We will get to that in a later edition, I am sure. Because there's loads of Bond stuff here to go through. Um, I'm British. I'm going to love Bond. So I've collected Bond for many, many years. And I'm glad to show it with you now. Um, hopefully you enjoy these set of videos. That will be coming up. Uh, there is going to be some weird and wonderful stuff in there as well. Although I know a few haven't actually seen this Atashi case. But um, there we go. So... A lot of these discs for this edition were done by Lowry Digital. They did a restoration um, in 4K. So the 4K masters do exist for some of these films because they've run out of money. Um, I can't remember which one they fell out on. It might have been on a Majesty's Secret Service. I could be wrong. Um, if anyone does know, that would be great. 
to find out. You could probably Google it. But um, Kaleidoscape and iTunes do have all the Bond films available in 4K. Obviously on iTunes at about 10 gig. On Kaleidoscope for the Strasso system users, uh, users, they're about 80 odd gig. And they've got full lossless sound, DTS, HD, master audio. They don't have an HDR grade. And that might be what's stopping them coming out on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. Um, so it's a nice booklet. Um, I did prefer the special edition booklets more. I just grabbed one here quickly. That's the MGM DVD logo that I said I really liked at the top. This is the booklet from the special edition. Um, we had scene selections. Remember those. Um, this was a Fox release for MGM in the UK. I think in the US it was done by MGM Home Entertainment. So this is all the information that we had in the special edition. And talks about widescreen and standard. Um, I really like those booklets. So best crack on. So that's Dr. No. I'll try and move through these quickly now. So from Russia We Love, again, I, I like the artwork at the back. Um, they look really nice, these foil slip covers. This one is just starting to fall apart there. So I will do a remedial on them. Goldfinger. I think it's Sean embossed. No, it's just the angle. It does look it there, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I think he is. Slightly. Not as much emboss work as the title. We can easily find that out. If we look inside. You can see the title all embossed. And yeah, a little bit of emboss work for Sean Connery around there. But not, not as much as the top. Um, we'll have a quick look at this one because it's such a good film, this. There wasn't any reverse artwork on these sets. Again, we had the booklet and they're talking about the Lowry digital process at the back. And there it features the original theatrical poster at the bottom for Bond. DTS HD again. Sorry, DTS 5.1 surround sound on that again. We then move on to Thunderbolt. And Never Say Never Again is not part of this set. It's not an official Eon product, uh, Productions release, so it's not part of this Atashi case. And there's a look at the back. Let's now get on to You Only Live Twice. There's Blofeld. Donald Pleasance. All PG so far. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, one of my favourite Bonds. I know it got slated over the years, but I think more people are starting to appreciate this now. Uh, it's a very touching story. Um, uh, Diana Rigg is brilliant as the main Bond girl in it, as Tracy. Uh, obviously, you've got a great entrance theme, which is just instrumental, but you've also got We Have All the Time in the World, which is uh, a superb track. Yeah, one of my favourites. So, so Sean came back to do Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, it's a shame they had Charles Gray as um, Blofeld would have been better with Donald Pleasance again because I remember him from, uh, I think it was You Only Live Twice. He got shot, well he got stabbed, sorry, in Japan. And then they relaunched with Sir Roger Moore in the lead role as James Bond in Live and Let Die, which had a score from George Martin and um, Paul McCartney and Wings did the theme tune. Um, and they moved back to the 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio for this. They broke away from the Panavision. Because I think the first couple were... 1.66 to 1, and then for GoldenEye, they opened up the aspect ratio. I'm pretty sure I'll have to double check that, sorry, just to see if I was right. Nope, Goldfinger was 
uh, 1 1.8 or 1.66 to 1 as well. So it was Thunderball where they went to a 2.35 to 1 Panavision aspect ratio. But, but for this one, they changed to 1.85 to 1. And they're talking about the Lowry uh, digital processing here, but I think some of them actually went to 2K not 4k but i can't remember which ones didn't get 4k remasters because they run out of money so we then had man with a golden gun that slip covers in pretty good nick that one i actually like this film uh, it's got a good tune as well i thought christopher lee was a good bad guy like the the start at the beginning um, yeah, I quite enjoyed this one. Again, 1.85 to 1. Next was The Spy Who Loved Me with the underwater car. Do you remember that one? I'd like to say it was a Lotus, am I right? I can't remember. And for this one, they went back to 2.35 to 1. They went back to Panavision. What did they call it on the last ones? They didn't, didn't mention it. Okay. They just mentioned on this, it was Panavision. Okay, so left side done. Let's get on to the right side. That's not going to play ball. Moonraker, obviously set in space. Yeah, a little bit far-fetched. Panavision again. What's that in there? Okay, it tells you how to change the code on the Atashi case, I believe. Okay, they slight angled these um, inserts. So then we got For Your Eyes Only, which as you can see, I never got to opening. So that slip covers in great neck. And that was Panavision again. And next we went for Octopussy. And 2.35 to 1. Then Duran Duran's hit song, View to a Kill. Really enjoyed that. I know a lot of people don't like this movie. And that was the end of Sir Roger Moore. And then... A film I saw in the cinema and I was gutted when Bond turned round and it was Timothy Dalton. But I left the cinema with a huge smile on my face and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was brilliant as Bond. It was completely different to Roger Moore. And uh, yeah, it, this is one of my all-time favourite movies. You will notice as we go through the next few weeks of this collection, I've got a lot of Living Daylight stuff. And this was 2.35 to 1 as well. So Aha uh, did the theme tune for this one, which um, I really enjoyed as well. Um, and we'll, we'll go into this one, as it's one of my favourites. So again, disc art present. We've got a flyer for winning an Aston Martin. I think I'm too late to win that now, unfortunately. So... We've got a little booklet here on this great movie. So the fourth actor to take the role, official role. We're not counting Casino Royale with David Niven. So David Niven and Woody, Hall, uh, Woody Allen as Sir James Bond and James Bond, Jimmy Bond. Um, we'll stick to the official line. Great poster that. And then that was 86. And then in 89, we got the next James Bond film with Timothy Dalton. And that was Licensed to Kill, which, as you can see, well, View to a Kill went to a 12. But Licensed to Kill was a 15 certificate. Yeah, not going to be able to repair that one. So Bond goes rogue on this one. Yeah, like this film as well. Then we had a huge gap. And then Pierce Brosnan came into the role. 
with GoldenEye. And as you can see, they're saying it's uncut. It was severely cut here in the UK. Um, I do have the Region 1 snap case, which is obviously from America. Um, posted that on Twitter on X the other night. And I do have the Laserdisc, which have a, has a bass exploding soundtrack. It is severe, the bass on that. Really is. The DTS Laserdisc was different. Um, it was mixed completely different. It wasn't as bassy. And many said it sounded much better. But, um, yeah, there was a, a lot of severe bass in the AC3 THX Laserdisc. So uncut again on the discs. And of course, we had a new M for this one, played by Dame Judy Dench. Again, there's mixed opinions on that. Many didn't like her as M, and some didn't mind. Nice poster, that one. Nothing about Loudy Digital in here, of course. Well, that's 2.35 to 1. Good theme tune as well, written by Bono and the Edge from U2, uh, which Tina Turner sang. I think John Barry's still on this one as well, isn't he? Um, doesn't say. Okay, and then after Goldeneye, we had Tomorrow Never Dies. Again, uncut severely cut in the UK on the original DVD and the special edition DVD. So there's a wealth of uh, features on the Region 1 uh, special edition. But we had quite a few here on this Ultimate. As you can see, there's quite a few features on here. I didn't mind Tomorrow Never Dies. It was, I thought it was quite enjoyable. Uh, Michelle Yao is a great actress as well. And let's move on. The World is Not Enough, sung by Garbage, of course. Again, another nice slipcover. This is Pierce Brosnan's third outing. This is 12. The last two were 15 certificate here in the UK. And then we get his last movie and this is where this box set ends die another day uh, sung by madonna i know a lot didn't like this film it got a bit over the top didn't it with the camouflaging car uh, and a nice castle um so means it's the last one let's let's try and get in here if i can the slip cover is really coming apart on this one. I think it might actually be stuck to the case. There we go. So again, a 12. Again, discard. So, I hope you're enjoying the video. Um, there is loads more to come. If you do enjoy it, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, do whatever you guys like. I would appreciate a thumbs up. And maybe subscribe so you can catch the next video, part two. Right, so let's let's get in this envelope right here. So we've got this nice foil, metallic foil effect with an embossed 007 gun logo. Thickened card. We've got limited edition certificate, James Bond Ultimate Edition. It's not numbered. You just get a certificate. Would have been nice to be numbered. Uh, would be interesting to know how many were made. So then we get some posters. The original theatrical posters. Again, Living Daylights, good poster. Missing out on Her Majesty's Secret Service there. Of 
Octopussy, Man with the Golden Gun, for your eyes only. The Goldfinger one, very nice. Golden eye, do like that artwork. It's nice on the snap on the snap case uh, from America. It's got a bit of blue down the bottom. It, it looks really nice. You'll see that in the in one of the following uh, videos. So I think that is it. That is everything for part one. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed unboxing it with you. And these these have probably been all superseded now by the Blu-rays, and we will get the 4K one day. It's bound to happen. They can't sit on. They can't sit on it. They've got loads of money. They'll get in for this. So I will do remedials on these cases. We'll get them fixed. But that you have to be careful when you close it as well because the cases are quite tight. So that ends the video for part one. Again, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you've stayed to the end and I'll see you again soon for more unboxing videos, video reviews and the James Bond collection part two. But thanks for watching. Goodbye.